Hey guys, Sam Rhino here with another video. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the A7 IV. No, you're not. What the hell is that noise? All right, that was spooky. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. <laughs> hey guys, Sam Rhino here with another video. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the A7 IV. No, this is not the A7 IV, this is the A1, but you're watching me on the A7 IV paired with the Tamron 28 to 75 G2 lens, the newer one. Excellent lens, by the way. You know, I just wanna let you know right off the bat, if you're looking for a technical review with a lot of pixel peeping and, and shooting walls and stuff like that, this is not that kind of review. If you're familiar with my channel, what I do is I go out shooting with the camera, uh, out in the field shooting wildlife, just the way that you would use it. And I'll let you know how it performs for me. I give you my opinion on it, and it's my opinion, obviously. Uh, I let you know about any quirks that I find and I give you my recommendation. So if you're looking for something more technical, uh, there's a lot of other people that do a really good job with that. Dustin Abbott, for example, comes to mind. He's really good at it uh, and a lot of other people, but I just want to let you know so you don't waste your time if that's what you're looking for. I apologize for taking so long to uh, post this video. You know, I got this camera back in December and now we're in March. But I feel that it takes a long time to really get a feel for a camera uh, and to, to, to evaluate a camera for wildlife and specifically wildlife because I think it's different than most other photography. You know, you can't really control, uh, you know, a lot of what's happening. You know, wildlife doesn't wait for you. It's not like, you know, if you're shooting portraits uh, to control the environment, you control them when you're shooting, uh, you control the light if you're in a studio. Uh, landscape, you can pick when to shoot, where to shoot. So, you know, with, with wildlife, it's different. There's a lot of different uh, variables and a lot of different conditions and situations. You got low light, you got heat shimmer, heat distortion, you know, cold weather, hot weather, uh, rain, fog, snow, <laughs> whatever it is, when it's happening, you got to try to capture and do the best that you can to get the best image possible. And I feel that it takes a while to know how a camera performs in those different uh, situations. And the only way to know that is to go out and use the camera over and over uh, to find out how it performs. And also there's a lot of little quirks you don't find out right away. And the only way that you find out about them is by using the camera. So that's why it took me a little while, you know, and I know whenever a new camera comes out these days, uh, there's a lot of reviews coming out right away. And part of that is because, you know, those people are getting the camera early <clears throat> and they have a limited time with the camera before they have to send it back. And the other part of it is they know if they don't get the review out as fast as possible, somebody else will and they're going to lose a ton of views. And I'm not knocking them for it. I totally understand it. But for me, I don't really care about views. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more interested in giving you how I really feel about the camera and really get a, a good feel for it before I tell you how I feel about it. Uh, so that's more important to me. <clears throat> and with that said, some of the earlier reviews, uh, and I don't remember who said it, but there was a couple of reviews that called the uh, A7 IV a baby A1. And what that created is I had a ton of people <laughs> uh, reach out to me when, I, when they found out that I got this camera, uh, asking me if they should sell their A1 now and get some money back and buy this camera instead or if they were thinking about the A1, they were on the fence, should they just skip the A1 and buy this camera and save $4,000? And the answer to that is no. <laughs> uh, you know, I even got sucked into it a little bit. When I first got the camera, the first day I went out shooting with it, I remember feeling a little disappointed and I couldn't figure out why. And I remember calling a friend of mine, Jeff, and I said, you know, Jeff, I, I feel like I'm a little disappointed with this camera. But then I had to take a step back and really think about it and I did something different that I never did before and that's completely detached myself from the A1 and what I did is I just went out for a while just shooting the A7 IV nothing else I even left the A1 home sometimes just uh, not to be tempted to use it and that's when I really started to appreciate and fall in love with this camera uh, and fall in love with it for what it is and what it is it's an excellent replacement for the A7 III uh, it's a huge upgrade I know I shot the a7 III, it was my first Sony camera when I switched over to Sony from Nikon. Uh, it's a huge upgrade from that, much better autofocus, you got the Bird IAF, the 4K60. There's so many things to love about this camera, but it's not a replacement for the A1. <clears throat> and if you go into it, 
with the mindset that you're gonna get an A1 or a slimmed down version of the A1 for $2,500, you might be disappointed. <laughs> but if, you, if you're looking at it as you're buying a really good all around camera uh, that, you know, honestly beats a lot of the cameras in its price range uh, and gives you, you know, so much of 33 megapixels is really in that price range, you don't get any cameras. Most of them are 24 or 20. Uh, you know, you get an excellent autofocus, the bird IEF, like I said before, you know, I don't want to keep renaming the sa uh, same stuff, but you know, it, it's a great buy for that price, but it's not an A1. So don't, you know, don't go into that mindset with that. And the other thing is, can we please now put this whole silly color science, the Sony color science thing to bed, please. The colors coming out of this camera look amazing. Uh, and it, it does with the A1 as well. You know, I don't think you can really say anything about color science anymore with uh, with Sony cameras. And I never thought it was an issue before. I always thought it was a silly argument because it's such a subjective thing. Uh, but really, you know, let's put it to bed now. Honestly, there's nothing to really say about it anymore. Color science is amazing coming out of this camera, especially uh, I love using S Cinetone, uh, especially for wildlife. It makes all my videos look uh, uniform. I don't have to do any color grading, maybe adjust a couple of sliders here and there, but it looks fantastic coming out of the camera. So let's please put this uh, color science uh, silly talk uh, to bed now. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I don't want to talk too much. Uh, I want to uh, let's get going with this uh, and let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I guess let's go. <laughs> So before we get to the next segment, I just wanted to comment on the weather sealing really quick. I found no issues with the weather sealing at all. Here I was shooting in some light snow and I was out there for quite a long time. Uh, I found no issues at all. And the real test came is one morning I was shooting some hooded mergansers and it was raining pretty good. And I was out there for about 45 minutes. The camera got completely soaked and I had no issues. Uh, and I got some really nice pictures and video. I was using the 200 to 600 with a 1.4 teleconverter. And I had no issues with that. And I was switching for the photos. I was taking with the 600 F4 because of the low light. And I I was really pleasantly surprised of how well it performed in, uh, in those conditions. Uh, disclaimer here, I'm not telling you to go out and shoot in the rain with your camera. I'm just letting you know about my experience. All right, guys.
So one little issue I encountered, and it's only happened a couple of times, so it's not a huge issue, uh, is sometimes I would turn the camera on and it just wouldn't focus on anything, uh, no matter what I did. And I would have to turn it off and turn it back on and then it would be fine. But one time uh, that didn't work and I actually had to shut it off, take the lens off, put it back on, and then it was fine again. Uh, you know, I just want to emphasize that a lot of these little issues get fixed with firmware. And I remember the A1 had so many little issues and a couple firmwares fixed everything just about. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's not a huge issue. And like I said, it only happened a few times, but I just wanted to point it out. So one of the things that was talked about as a negative about this camera was the fact that when you did 4K60, it did it in a 1.5 crop. But to me, that wasn't really a negative when you're doing wildlife because you want as much reach as possible. And what I started doing actually is I started using clear image zoom on top of that. No, it's not something new. It's been around for a while, but I never really used it before. But I started experimenting with it. Uh, you get in the 1.5 crop already uh, in the camera, and then you add the clear image zoom, and then you throw on a 1.4 teleconverter or a two-time teleconverter, and you got yourself some incredible reach for doing wildlife video. And uh, there was a couple of days that I had uh, two really nice days of shooting some eagles and getting some video. And there was a couple of eagles that were eating some fish that was pretty far out. And I was able to really get some nice video that I normally wouldn't be able to get, uh, you know, without that. And I'm going to share those pictures and video with you next. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. All right, guys.
So one thing that I didn't care for that they changed uh, in this camera from previous Sony cameras is this top dial. So they made it now to switch between photography and video. You have to push this little button in the front that's really awkward to get to, twist the dial on the bottom, and then switch to whatever mode you're in from the top dial. So for me, for example, when I'm doing photography, I'm always shooting in manual. And then for video in previous cameras, I would just switch from manual to one and two where I have all my settings for video, all preset in there uh, that I set in. So it was really easy to just switch the one dial to go from video uh, to stills really quick or vice versa. With this, that extra step of having to fumble around to try to push that button, twist in the one dial, then twist in the top dial, you know, while you're trying to track wildlife, I found it to be really distracting and a pain in the butt, and I really didn't care for it. Uh, I understand why they did it. They were trying to, uh, trying to separate, you know, photography from video, different uh, menu options and all that stuff and separate it. But I, I really didn't care for it. I'm curious what everybody thinks about it. Uh, leave me in the comments what you think, uh, what your thoughts are. I'm really curious to know. All right, guys. Since I know a lot of you are going to be matching up the A7 IV with the 200 to 600, uh, this whole next segment is going to be uh, the A7 IV with the 200 to 600 only. Um, and then after that, I'm going to give you my final thoughts and we'll wrap this up and let you know what I think about this camera. All right, guys. All right, so we're at the end of the road here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sitting down. Uh, I've been hiking all day. I'm kind of pooped. Um, but uh, this is the part where I give you my uh, final thoughts on the camera and give you my recommendation. And I want to emphasize that this is obviously my opinion. It doesn't mean that it's right. Just giving you my opinion from using this camera for almost three months. Um, this camera was a, a little bit difficult for me to make a uh, hundred percent recommendation one way or the other uh you know like for example with the a1 you know i said that if the camera is in your budget if you have the money for it absolutely get it it was you know there's no questions with this i feel that this camera fits different criterias and it's not a hundred percent definitive on certain things uh and let's talk about it so for me personally i bought this camera because I wanted a backup camera to the A1 that was capable of taking some good video and 
at least 4K60, so that fits the bill for that. But it's also capable, of, so I need to take some pictures with it, that it's a capable camera of taking great shots. And this definitely can take great shots, it's a great camera. But, you know, I, th I think that if you're looking at it for strictly wildlife photography, you don't care about video, and you do a lot of action and birds in flight, I think there's a, a, a better option in my opinion, and we'll get into that in a second. So first let's talk about who this camera it would be great for, I think. If you, the first one for me is if you already own the a7 III and you absolutely love that camera and you've had it for a while now and you've just been waiting for that upgrade to come out because it's been a while now, then absolutely get this camera. It's a huge upgrade, you're gonna love it. Um, now, if you do a lot of different types of photography, this is the second person that I think this camera would be great for. You know, you do a little bit of landscape, you do a little bit of wildlife, you do some portraits, you do all types of photography. Video is important to you. Uh, then this camera is perfect for you. Uh, it's a perfect option. It does a lot of things well. The video is beautiful out of this camera. Uh, I actually think the video autofocus, you know, I, it's kind of tough for me, but it almost feels like it's a little bit better than the A1 when it comes to video autofocus. Strictly video, not talking photos here. Uh, but I, regardless, I love the video coming out of this camera. So uh, so if you do, if video is important to you, this would definitely be a great option. Uh, so now let me give you the scenario where I don't think this camera would be the best option. If you're strictly a wildlife shooter, you do a lot of birds of flight, a lot of action, I think you'd be better off finding a used A9 for around the price, ra price range or lower. And, you know, I did a little searching uh, before I, I made this commentary to make sure that uh, they were out there. And there's tons of them out there uh, where they're used, refurbished. Uh, I found a bunch of open boxes at some big uh, camera stores. Uh, and they were all very similar price to this. Uh, some were lower. Actually, a friend of mine about a month ago uh, found one in pristine condition uh, uh, for around two thousand dollars, and he's ecstatic with the camera. He loves it. Uh, he was on the fence about buying this camera, and he ended up going with that. Uh, you know, based on uh, some of the recommendation I gave him and his thoughts. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm going to tell you the reasons why I say that. There's for, uh, there's a few things in this camera that hold me back from 100% recommending this for, you know, somebody that uh, does 100% wildlife photography uh, and doesn't care about video. One is the frame rate. Uh, you know, if this was five years ago, frame rate would be fine. But right now, I think the frame rate is just not enough if you do uh, birds in flight and action. Six frames per second for comp uh, uncompressed and eight to ten uh, for compressed to me is a little bit on the low side uh, I'm not saying you can't get great flight shots and great action shots you know your timing has to be perfect obviously um, so that, that that's one reason my second reason is the viewfinder the blackout free viewfinder that you get in the a9 that you don't get in this camera and it's you know it's been a while since I shot a camera that didn't have that because I was shooting the A9 for quite a while before I got the A1 and now I have the A1 and they both have the blackout uh, free uh, viewfinders and when you're tracking something uh, it's so crucial that you don't get that blackout you know that for that millisecond that sometimes you know throws you off your game a little bit when you're tracking something uh, so I think that's so important so you know, obviously, if you do a lot of perch birds, you know, that's not as important. Uh, so, absolutely, uh, it, that was like a huge reason uh, of why I say, uh, you know, the A9 would be better for that. And the third reason, believe it or not, even though this has the bird IEF, I still don't think it's the autofocus is as good as, or as accurate as the A9. Uh, I shot both cameras. I mean, I shot the A9 for a very long time. Uh, my favorite all-time camera, it still would be the camera I'd be shooting if I didn't have the A1. Uh, but, you know, 
I just felt that sometimes this camera, a lot of times I would get soft images and it could be, you know, part of the reason for that with in flight sometimes uh, you, with, uh, with that, what I was talking about before with the, with the blackout in the viewfinder that can sometimes throw you off and even though you think you're on the target uh you know you end up with a soft image because you really weren't <laughs> uh so you know i still think the autofocus is better on the a9 and tracks better on the a9 even though it doesn't have the bird iaf and i found the bird iaf to be not as good uh as the a1 and i'm not comparing it to the a1 it's the only camera that has bird iaf really uh besides the the a7 IV. so that's why I, I said that uh and it could be because the processor is much faster on this or recognizes things faster i'm not sure i'm no engineer um but you know these are my thoughts so here we go in a conclusion who do i recommend this camera for if you own the a7 III, you've been happy with it you love that camera you've been waiting for an upgrade this is the camera for you. If you do a lot of perch birds, you do a lot of different photography, uh, you shoot a lot of smaller birds uh, on branches and stuff like that, uh, this is the camera for you. If you care about video features, uh, this is the camera for you. Uh, but the person that I don't think this is the camera for is the person that's really serious about wildlife photography, only does wildlife photography, doesn't care about video, does a lot of birds in flight, a lot of action, then I would go the route that I said. Uh, if you could step up a little bit of money, get the A92 when it's on sale. Uh, it's been on sale quite a few times. Or get a used or refurbished or open box A9. And I think you'll be a lot ha happier for that, per uh, for doing that, uh, you know, that type of photography. So anyway, that's my conclusion. Again, this is my opinion. Uh, if you disagree with it, you know, we're still friends. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not saying I'm right. Uh, you could have a totally different opinion and that's fine. But, uh, you know, after me, uh, after using the A9 and using this camera for quite a while, that's the conclusion that I came up with. So am I personally happy with this camera? I am very happy with it uh, because like I said, it fits my purpose of having a backup camera to the A1. This is still gonna be my main photography camera, obviously. Uh, but I wanted a second camera that I could do video while I'm taking stills with this. And this camera does a fantastic job with video, uh, but it's still capable of taking some shots if I need to take shots with this. So that was a perfect fit for me. Uh, is it for you? That I can't answer that for you. I gave you my thoughts of why you know it fits. So you have to decide from there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, uh, again, it's not a technical review or specs or stuff like that. I don't do that. I just go out and shoot the camera and share some pictures and video with you and give you my thoughts on it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy shooting and see you later. All right, guys. <laughs>